This country belongs to all of us. And the federal government, the presidency, must act fast. Because Canada is going from north, west, northeast, north central, southwest, southeast, south south. There is general insecurity. And this is being prepared by his men. I want to repeat again. I have made it a petition to the presidency and to all security agencies before that if they want peace, Mayor Diana must be arrested. These are people who are honored. They are taking responsibility that they have killed in Miami, they raped and do all sorts of atrocities. And yet their leadership is in Abuja and nobody is confronting them. And until these people are arrested. When I talked, I was being castigated. I was being vilified. Nothing bad that was not said against me. I am this and that. But the reality is here. It is not just happening to Benway State today. It is happening to the entire country. Why is the federal government being silenced about this phenomenon? When will the federal government come out and criticize and arrest against men carrying AK-47? When are they going to do that? Are we second citizens in this country? What, 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 what gives you an animal superior to any other person, to a team man? I am not your slave. A human man is not a slave to any family man in this country. And so federal government must do this. At a point in time, the federal government came out with a policy through the police that even those with license, then guns, double barrel and pop action should surrender to police. How many times have the presidency come out to condemn that foreign men are carrying AK-47 all over the place? This is not correct. We stand for justice, equity, and fairness. Whatever is happening to a foreign man should also happen to any other person. That was why I called for the federal government to license me and many others to, to have guns, to have AK-47 too. Because if I have my AK-47, a foreign man is coming there, he knows that I have and he has, then we can fight each other. When you can't disarm me and arm a foreign man, So this is not right. The federal government is biased, is on fire. The failure in security is caused by federal government. And maybe what I perceive is that the president is not aware of this. Because if he were aware, he would stop it. I know General Muhammad Buhari retired as someone who is disciplined. There are people around me, side scoffers and mediocres, are not willing to let him know the pains that Nigerians are going through. Mr. President, in case you are listening to me, I want you to know that your people, Nigerians, you promised Nigeria that you refer to all. You said that you will, you will be good for everybody and for nobody. And now it will appear that you are just for flying people because nothing is coming from you to give the people confidence that you are their president. You are the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You are not the president of Fulani. You are the president of everybody. And I owe you a duty as a stakeholder in this nation to let you know that what is going on is wrong. And this has the potentials of dividing this country which will not be in the interest of anyone. Some of us believe in the unity of this country. We believe in leadership, that every leader comes by God, that we have you the responsibility to advise you when things are going on. It is not everything that I know as government, but I depend on it. So you must depend on us. The whole country, those who are silent, are doing that as psychophants and mediocres. They are not willing to tell you the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Mr. President, if anybody is deceiving you that all is well, it is not well with us here in Benue State. And what I can hear from other states, it is not well with Nigeria today. You must act fast before it is late.
he was overwhelmed with what he saw. And the little children who were there, the adults, the women, and everyone pleaded that please let government support them and provide security for them to go back to their homes. Because staying in those camps for five months was not a good experience. Whatever it is, no privacy for a whole family of over 20. You stay in that open place, you have four wives, and you are forced to stay in a primary school environment where there is no privacy and you cannot leave, and so on. So promises were made, and uh, I can assure you that as I talk to you, the Office of the Vice President team, they've been working with us since he left. And they are already um, putting up some technical things together to it's ensure that we commence work. One, uh, there is massive arrangement to provide uh, housing for our people to occupy. There are also provision to provide sibling and other farm inputs. And of course, uh, even tractors and other farm inputs to ensure that uh, they do their normal work and at least have something With which to, be able to, to, stay, to stay back. Your Excellency, the federal government has launched its uh, initiative on ranching with uh, 10 pilot states. Uh, it's expected to cost about $176 billion. Benue is one of the states uh, in, that, in the first phase. And um, you were at the meeting yes. where this was unveiled. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, let me ask, what do you make of this scheme? Because I remember that you had been quoted before as saying that Benue does not have land that is going to give to anybody to do private business. If they want, they must come like other investors, negotiate, buy, and then use. So, in view of this, you know, I'm looking at what do you make of it? I have not changed my mind. That is the position of Benue State. That is, you don't have land. I talk to you today. As I talk to you today, there is nowhere where you can obtain 20 hectares of land that is free to do open grazing. And so the land is not there. And cattle rearing is a private business just like any other business. So when you're doing business, you must do some level of investment before you expect some uh, profit. You must invest, and that is the law of nature. It's, it's the only way you sow that you reap. So when you're not prepared to do that, it is impossible. But I have been supporting the issue of providing subsidy for cattle realers, for herdsmen. That can be done. Government can do it at the local government level, at the state and at the federal level. But like I said some few days ago, uh, 10 states have been selected to pilot this ranching program. For us, we have a law in place. And the process of establishing a ranch in Benway State is there. You follow it, you get the land, and you do your business. But to say that we provide 5,000 hectares of land, we don't have it available. Did you make this your concerns known? Of course, right, right from the inception, from the NEC committee that visited Benway, we made this known. And the committee accepted our position because they saw it. Stakeholders were there, the herdsmen were there, they, were, they interacted with them and other Benue stakeholders were there. And the committee and said that truly, Benue state law should stand. And this was presented tonight. But you see, out of the 10 states, we have our peculiarities. There are other states with massive lands that can be given out. And this is very simple. So the same approach I may adopt in Benue may not be the same another state uh, we adopt to be able to continue with this. So why government is looking at our peculiarity, uh, other states with provision of land, uh, they can go ahead and, and do this. And even in the last presentation where I was present, I also made it known that uh, we don't have land except what we have 
uh, enshrined in the law we enacted. Now, uh, moving from there, I, I think uh, it's then important to link these issues that we've talked about uh, with other security challenges from which Benway may or may not be a victim. But now, general security challenges. Earlier when you talked, you mentioned a number of states where they don't have anti-open grazing law, but yet they have these security challenges which lead to people being killed in battles between herdsmen and uh, farmers over land and all that. You mentioned Zamfara State. In Zamfara State, for example, only recently it was reported that about 3,000 people had to leave Zamfara mm. for the border with Katsina as refugees. That was put down to cattle rustling. In uh, Nasara State, there's an ongoing battle as well. Uh, in Nasara State, in Adamawa State, in a number of other places, even in the south, yeah. there are all these what do you What do you think can be done to attend to this? After all, we are going to have a general election next year. How viable will that be if these security challenges persist up until that time? What do you think can be done? I mean, not just in Bedway now, but nationally. You see, any country or any society that do not respect the rule of law and due process we find itself in where Nigeria is going today. For me, the first thing to do is for Nigerians to resolve. And when I talk about Nigerians, I'm not just talking about the lead, I'm talking about those of us who are leaders too. We must together as a people resolve that we must respect the laws of our lands. And let this thing be sent to the least person in the society. And let people know that it is only the law that can guide us, that can direct us, that can lead us to where we are expected to be. It is only the law that can help us regulate our activities. Outside that, it can only be disaster. And when we don't obey the rule of the law, when we don't sanction those who violate the provisions of our law, then we are calling for anarchy. And when there is anarchy, only God knows where every one of us will be. So there is every need for us to learn to respect it. Let everybody, if you are given the responsibility of policing this country, you should do your work very well. And if you don't do it well, you should be sanctioned. And if anyone violates the law, he should also be sanctioned. That is the way to go. As it is, it is today, it will appear to me that impunity is reigning in this country. This crisis we're talking about, how can I, as governor, write to security agencies and report those who are killing my people and no action is being taken? And I've, 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 I've quoted their names. No even interrogation, no even invitation to these people. So how will the killing stop? So they think that they are above the law. And I'm sure I'm not in Zamfara, I'm not in uh, Demawa, I'm not in other plateau or national, but I, I, I believe that this is the kind of thing that is going on. I can never protect any criminal. I have told my people that if you get yourself involved in any criminal activity, if you're arrested, you'll be responsible for it, you go and explain.